Hello, and welcome to the step-by-step -step project. So um, the first thing you want to do is figure out what you want to um, talk about. And actually, I'm going to do a Thanksgiving cheese ball. I'm going to show you what I was originally going to do. What I originally was going to do was right here. See this little kitten? This little kitten just had a bath, and I had to watch a YouTube video to learn how to step by step give a kitten a bath, but that's kind of a hard project. I'm going to stick with the um, with the cheese ball, but I thought you'd like to see this little kitten who's really adorable. Okay, so now to the cheese ball, a little less exciting, but you can see here that I have selected um, some images that I am going to use for, uh, this is one for the final, and here's some ingredients. I've got some cheese, I've got a cracker, I've got some cream cheese, and some roasted peppers, pimento, and um, here's some candy corn, and also I think I grabbed some pretzels. I think there was a pretzel here. Oh, you know what? It is here, but it didn't um, get the right format, so I need to download another pretzel in a moment. Anyway, so what I'm going to start doing is tracing these images. I like to lock the image first, so I select it, go to Lock, Selection, and then I take my pen tool and I'm going to draw these little curves in here to get my Ritz looking just right. Now one of the things you can do is you can draw all of this or you can say you know what it's kind of the same thing again and again and again so i am going to stop for a moment i'm going to go and make this an outline i'm just going to check that my curves look nice even here this one's a little sharp this one looks a little sharp okay so i've got some nice curves here and, you know, I don't want you guys to spend wasted time. I want you to be smart about what you're doing. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. And I'm going to rotate it slightly. Rotate it a little bit more. And then bring these points together. That's just a little bit more. So it's not perfect because it turns out that a Ritz is not as symmetrical as it looks. And then what I do is I select these two endpoints, one there, and zoom in, and one here. I can also um, drag over both those points, and then I can go up and join the path. And then it's got a sharp point there, so... Um, I can go to the anchor point tool, which is command C, and go in there and just tighten or tidy that up a bit, okay? Um, there's an extra point there too. You don't need to be as fussy as this, but I wanted to show you all the techniques and then delete that point. So then I can go around and now that I've got these two joined, I will copy and paste and rotate some more so you get the idea about that so i'm going to put this on pause and um, come back to you in a moment okay so i did my ritz cracker there and now i'm looking at this cheese and it probably makes sense to draw chunks of cheese but um, i'm gonna just do a little sample of um, some shredded cheese and see if it's gonna work or not I am not encouraged that it will, but let's just try doing some cheesy bits. Even if I do all this work, I don't know if it'll read as cheese. But what you will be doing 
in the end is you will be labeling them as well. So then I will grab this one and um, sample this color. Oops, that color. Run around a little. Get the uh, colors behind them. This one there. Hear that noise in the background? That's my big cat that wants to check out the kitten. I think at our next commercial break or our next pause, I might be letting a kitten in so he's not distracting us. Okay. So now that I've got all these lighter pieces here, I'm going to go and make a sort of backgroundy shape. I don't need as much cheese that's here. Um, and make this darker and arrange center back. And see if I copy all these cheesy scraps here. Copy, paste. Rotate them, move them around. I think it could work. So I'll leave it and try it and see how it works. And then you can distort some of them, change them a little bit so you don't see the same piece over and over again. And um, so that's an idea of how that could work in a pretty simple way. And then it's got that flat look that this cracker does. Um, but I may end up doing chunks of cheese. So then we've got these red peppers. So I'll just draw one, the one that's not cropped, and I will go over here and make an outline. So um, the thing that I'm doing with all of these though is I'm planning on keeping it pretty flat. So you may want to do something that's got more gradations. And so looking at that cracker that could easily be gradated and this black area could be a gradation. Whatever it is that you do, you want to be pretty consistent and you want to keep it simple. So I've got my pepper here and I like to just sample from what's there, but I know that I can always go and change it. That came out really orangey. Grab this and sample from there to get that charred look. Well, that definitely doesn't look right. Um, it looks better. And then if I may or may not make that little tip green. You know, it might be getting too much into the details. So you see that I've started to make these different shapes. And the next thing I'll have to do is make them um, all more roughly the same size and think about um, how I'm going to work with them together as the ingredients. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on pause again. Okay, back again. So I continue to work and a few things I wanna show you. So I'm looking at these dots and I wanna make this whole cracker a bit smaller so it's more in scale with this, but then those dots maybe are a little bit too small. Actually, it needs to be quite a bit smaller. And maybe I'll make a few more, but so, these dots, I perhaps want to make them a little bit lighter. So maybe I'll grab this color, see how that looks. And I think I want to make them larger. So when I have a color selected and I want to make the background color, um, look at all the percentages there. So you can click here, right, to switch it. And then this showed up. So let me Command Z and show you how that happened again. So I um, clicked on the color of these dots, I need all these dots. And so, well, it's doing it now, but so um, I wanted to get the outside color. So when I click 
on the outside, it shows me that color so I don't have to go and figure out what that formula is. And then I can just click that. So now I've got the outside that way and I can um, increase the point size on the outline. So I could have made them bigger, but that seemed like an easy way to, um, you know, instead of scaling it, just to quickly make them bigger so I wouldn't have to rearrange them either. So then I will take that and I will group it. Um, and then I'm gonna call this um, the Thanksgiving cheese ball. I'm gonna make sure I spell it right. And I use capitalization. You could do all caps or however you want. Um, and so when I look at the fonts, I can select this type. And then when I scroll um, through here to pick out that font, now it's not doing it. Um, I'm going to put this on pause and figure out what I'm doing. I have no idea what I did wrong because the minute I turned the camera off, it was working fine. So I select my text. I go up to click the arrow and it shows me the text that I have here in the fonts so that I can actually see what looks good with the type I'm using. So this one kind of has an interesting feel. I want something a little bit warm and fuzzy like you know, being together with family for the holiday. So I'm going to save that one. I'm going to copy and paste and try another one. So I copy it. I go to the arrow on the side of the text there, and I just keep looking through trying to find some fonts. Now I want to find um, the Thanksgiving cheese ball is kind of a, you know, there's, there's nuances that I can do there. I can, um, make cheese ball on its own line. I can make the smaller. So, you know, Thanksgiving, if you think about the Thanksgiving meal, there's a whole um, lot of different dishes and a lot of it's potluck. So everyone's got a different take on Thanksgiving. So it's a whole bunch of different things. So I think the typography in this case should be a mix of typefaces. And again, like I said, I was looking for something that feels a little warm and fuzzy. Um, I don't want to do something that feels like cursive, that feels too much like a greeting card. I want it to be a little um, kitschy, I think, for me. I like, I think Thanksgiving's a bit kitschy sometimes. So, oh, this is kind of um, interesting. I like this particular font, but I don't want it to look too precious either. So I'm going to save that. Maybe I'll use that for just the word the. And I'm going to grab another font. So I like to see, you know, check out a bunch of different fonts and see what seems to work for me. Um, Copper Plate is an interesting font. It's um, very old and it was used um, with letterpress, you know, old fashioned letterpress. So I might want to hearken to something traditional there. So I'll play with that one. Um, let me just pick one more in here. Um, Let me just just make a decision, right? So I'm going to go with this for now. Okay, so now I can take these words and I'm going to cut them. Actually, I didn't mean to make a box. I am going to delete that box. Um, when I am working with just a heading type, it's nice to just paste it and not actually have it be in a box. So there's the word the, and then I can leave Thanksgiving, and maybe um, Thanksgiving is, you know, I think cheese ball is going to be in copper plate. So I might do something where I make them all 
line up 